Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Saturday, April 22nd. Tesla has launched a new Model Y rear-wheel drive in Canada with a starting price of $59,990 Canadian. The new lower price gives access to up to $12,000 in incentives. The new version features a smaller battery pack with a range estimate of 349 kilometers, or 245 miles, with the drivetrain. It starts at $59,999, which is $10,000 lower than the next cheapest version, which is the Model Y Long Range All-Wheel Drive. It's eligible for a $5,000 Canadian Federal EV incentive, like the Long Range, but unlike the Long Range, it's also eligible for up to $7,000 in Quebec EV incentives as well. Altogether, the electric crossover now starts at the equivalent of $35,400 U.S. This makes it yet another move for Tesla to create a tailored vehicle for a particular market. Just last week, Tesla made a new version of the Model 3 for businesses in the United Kingdom. With any luck, they'll make a car just for me, with new colors, new wheels, and a special horn to replace the fart machine that says, Green means go! Tesla has released a very detailed update on its 4680 battery cell program, which is expected to be critical for the future of electric vehicles. Drew Baglino, Tesla's senior vice president of engineering, said, quote, We've successfully demonstrated a lower process cost, zero waste water precursor process that we described on battery day at both lab and pilot scale, and are on the detailed design phase for incorporating this technology into the front end of our Austin cathode facility. On cathode production, we are 50% equipment and 75% utilities installed at our new cathode building in Austin with our goal to begin dry and wet commissioning this quarter and next quarter with the target to produce first material before the end of the year. Now, Baglino went on to conclude, quote, Going forward for the rest of the year, the priority one is to yield in cost for the 4680 program as we steadily ramp up production ahead of Cybertruck next year. Tesla has increased the Model S and Model X prices following several massive price cuts. In an overnight update to the online configurator, they increased the price of the Model S by $2,500 and also the Model X by the same amount. In some good news, Tesla has also added three years of free supercharging for all these purchases. As we noted during Tesla's production and delivery results for the first quarter of 23, there was a large discrepancy between the Model S and X production and deliveries. The automaker claimed that it was due to a large number of those vehicles being in transit to Europe and Asia. We will know soon enough when the second quarter numbers come through, but we're still not certain. The fact that the Model S and X are the only Tesla vehicles that don't qualify for the U.S. federal tax credit probably contributed to softening demand. Audi is set to release its next-generation A8 models next year, which will reportedly be the brand's most powerful EVs and really the most powerful vehicles they have overall. According to Autocar, the A8 EV will use the largest version of their PPE platform co-developed with Porsche and Audi. The report claims that it will be based on Audi's Grand Sphere concept, which featured two electric motors for a combined output of 710 horsepower and 708 pound-feet of torque. They also claim a 466 miles of range with a 120 kilowatt hour battery. The A8 EV is set to compete against the likes of the Mercedes-Benz EQS and the BMW i7. It's expected to go on sale next year. Rivian's head of software, Wasim Ben Saeed, discussed the company's upcoming software roadmap, including a big update with towing. He also unleashed a multitude of helpful new features that Rivian drivers can look forward to. One of the first features will be an integrated dash cam expected to roll out by the end of the month. And despite the R1T's existing ability to tow, he says that there will be improvements to the drivability, adding creator profiles and a key upgrade involving the use of cameras. It'll also include integrated text messaging on screen, activating cameras via blinker, navigation improvements to support adventure planning, valet mode, additional entertainment maps, holiday software events, or things like Halloween mode. Sounds fun. Rivian says it's developing an algorithm to determine charger reliability through customer feedback and reviews that will ensure a smooth charging experience in the future. General Motors looks to revive its electric super truck, the Hummer EV, with a new 3X trim, 
coming for both the electric truck and SUV models. Now, despite a starting price tag of over $80,000, GM received over 65,000 reservations for the comical electric truck. The SUV version got 90,000 reservations, causing General Motors to close orders back in September. And what's more is that more is more, wouldn't you know it, because the 3X trim, which is upcoming, is designed for, quote, those who want to head off the beaten path. It's going to have 355 miles of range and an optional extreme off-road package. can only imagine what that would do. The pickup will include additional underbody cameras, skid plate, and rock protection. In addition, it will include 18-inch wheels and a 35-inch mud terrain tire set. Now, the press release didn't specify, but I'm going to guess that the 3X has three battery modules in it. The regular Hummer EV already has a double Ultium battery system, and adding a third with the larger off-road tires could account for the somewhat higher range on a third battery. That's my guess, unless 3X is the name of some other trim level, but I've never heard of it. After revealing a slew of new fully electric vehicles aimed at reconnecting with its customer base in China, Toyota's recently appointed CEO, Koji Sato, says more needs to be done to keep up with the competition. Already, Toyota has slashed prices on its first EVs, the ones introduced in China, but also globally, which is the BZ4X. They slashed it by up to 15% earlier this year, trying to remain competitive. During an interview with the media, Sato said, quote, We need to increase our speed and efforts to firmly meet the customer's expectations in the Chinese market. He added after seeing the impact of the Shanghai Auto Show that he sees China as becoming an advanced market for EVs. The urgency to remain competitive comes after the automakers saw their first sales decline in the country last year in over a decade. Although Japanese automakers, like Toyota, account for nearly 20% of the overall Chinese market, they represent less than 0.35% of EVs. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has announced a massive deal with the Volkswagen Group to make an electric vehicle plant. As a free trade partner with the U.S. looking to stay relevant in a booming EV production landscape, Canada's industry minister was able to negotiate a deal that matches the U.S. deal. But they got to build a little further north. The government has agreed to subsidize what could be $13 billion in Canadian money or whatever they use, and this will be over the course of the next decade that the battery plant is in operation. Now, since this is directly related to the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act, part of the deal goes that if the USA removes the subsidies in the states, then the Canadians can pull the rug out from Volkswagen as well. Also, battery packs assembled in Canada should still enable some level of federal tax credits. Okay, here comes some rapid-fire news. California has reached 1.5 million electric vehicle sales, which is two years ahead of its planned 2025 target. Chile wants to create a plan to require state involvement in control of any lithium contracts, as they have the world's largest supply. And also, StoreDot has announced a partnership with VinFast to make fast-charging electric vehicle batteries for upcoming VinFast EVs. And lastly, Electrek takes a ride and a luxurious overnight stay in an electric Winnebago prototype. The interior was quite clever and calming, the workspace is well supplied, and sleep was comfortable and spacious. The biggest hurdle is actually range, or not actually range, it really is range. Since Winnebago builds the prototype from Ford's 2022 e-Transit, it's really at 108 miles, which still has a ways to go before it reaches the target market. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Robert Algier says, I'm reminded of the early days of the automobile, when several struggling companies were gathered under the new GM umbrella. Did pretty well and survived, a few brands short to this day. How about a group of entrepreneurs creating a new umbrella corporation, General Electric Motors, maybe, and buying Canoe, Rivian, Fisker, etc. Now that would be quite interesting indeed, a parent company for all those EV startups. There are some interesting innovations from a few of them that could totally combine together without a whole lot of overlap, but I wonder if the do-it-yourself entrepreneur adventurer spirit that got these companies where they are today is the same reason that they cannot join. 
Too many cooks in the kitchen is the first thought that comes to mind. Assuming that the companies start to die off, it could work. After pride is squashed and the originators wind up turning tail, a venture like that, all those EV companies combined together, it would need a lot of money. And I wonder where they could get that money from. Oh well, thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.